Hello everybody, I'm at the WASC Centre for Dialogue in Vancouver, Canada at the Canadian Space Society's Space Summit for 2015. This conference has a number of notable speakers including the President of the Canadian Space Agency, Sylvain Laporte, the CEO of the Earthcast Corporation, Scott Larson, who is streaming HD video from space, and even a scientist, Dr. Glennis Perrett, that's working on Mars Curiosity rover. This is your space pod for November 25th 2015. Hey everyone, I just got back with the Canadian Space Summit and let me tell you, I learned that the Canadian space industry has a bright future ahead of it. I learned that Canada will be involved in four major space missions in the coming years, including the Surface Water Ocean Topography Mission that will study the world's rivers, lakes and oceans to be launched in 2020. In 2018, the Radarsat 3 satellite constellation will provide radar services to the Canadian government departments. And in 2016, the OSIRIS-REx mission will launch that will take samples from an asteroid and return them to Earth. And finally, Canada is also involved in the James Webb Space Telescope, which will be launching finally in 2018. I also got the chance to talk with the president of the Canadian Space Agency, Sylvain Laporte. Here's what he had to say. So Sylvain Laporte, uh, thank you for your time today. I just wanted to ask, uh, in regards to the future of the Canadian Space Agency, um, you mentioned that you have some great relationships with international partners. And I was wondering if you plan, or if the Canadian Space Agency plan to include China in those relationships. China um, has a very progressive space program. Um, they're doing a lot of innovative things that are very interesting to us. So we clearly are monitoring what they are what they are doing. But admittedly, at this point, we have no plans of, of collaboration at this time. Great. And uh, my final question for you today is, I believe you have uh, experience in the um, Canadian IP office mm -hmm. and uh, with the patent uh, office as well. So I just wanted to ask... Uh, Technology in space is rapidly advancing uh, at quite a high rate, and there's a lot of innovation in the space industry. Mm -hmm. So are patents uh, relevant in the space industry today? I mean, in, in the United States, we have an ongoing patent dispute between Blue Origin and SpaceX with regards to sea landing of uh, reusable rockets, uh, and that doesn't seem to be resolved anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So what are your views on patents in the future of the space industry? Well, I'm not uh, really uh, aware of the, uh, that particular patent issue in the States, so I haven't been following that. Yeah. So I couldn't find an analogy in Canada, but uh, certainly my experience having worked in the, uh, in the patent office is that I would encourage uh, people who do innovate to protect their intellectual property, to protect their inventions going forward, especially because it's going to be a global play. And, you know, we don't go in space uh, alone. We go through partnerships and collaborations. So better to be equipped with some protection as you engage in those partnerships going forward. The company Earthcast currently has two camera satellites and two cameras aboard the International Space Station. They use these to provide Earth imagery and high-definition video. And I got to chat with their CEO, Scott Larson. Do you guys think you might do a collaboration with, say, educational institutes as kind of like an outreach program for um, getting kids into science and technology? Yes. Yeah. yeah we've, uh, we do quite a bit of work with the local university. Actually, we took a video, we took a picture of UBC oh, nice. uh, just a few weeks ago, a month ago or so. It was a, it was a clear day, gave it to them as part of the student union type, type program. But certainly, I mean, it's, uh, uh, we spend a lot of time talking at universities about Earth observation, technology, space. Space is popular again. Yeah. Fifteen years ago, no one cared, but now space is popular, and you got people wanting to go back to the moon and mine asteroids and all that kind of stuff, and we fit into that. Unfortunately, that's all I have time to cover today, but there were so many more great presentations, including learning about the atmosphere of Pluto from the New Horizons lead atmospheric scientist, learning a little bit about Canadian space history, and even a new way to control attitude on CubeSats. If you would like to see more content and more of our space pods, consider donating to our crowdfunding campaign at patreon.com slash spacepod. And thank you to all our patrons who have helped to bring us these space pods so far. If you're unable to donate to our campaign, consider liking this video and subscribing to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash tmro. 
and even consider sharing these videos with your family and friends. Thank you for watching and thank you to the Canadian Space Society for giving me the opportunity to attend their summit. My name is Lisa Stojanowski and until next time, keep discovering.